Hi friends, welcome to the answer writing practice for UPSC mains 2020 and you can write the answers for two questions on every alternate day and you can mail it to mainswithsarath at gmail.com. We would be correcting your answers whenever possible. Preference would be given to the students who write the answers regularly. On alternate days, I will explain the answers for these questions. So, in the previous video, I have given you the question number 8 and 9. Let us discuss the answers for them today. So, the 8th question. Pause the video, go through the question and then listen to my explanation. Okay. So, the question is saying, anti-defection law restricts a legislator's concerns. First thing. And it impedes the oversight function of the legislature. So, they are giving two things here. And then they are asking you to critically examine this statement. Generally, in the polity answers, I would suggest you to try to think of any one or two articles of the Constitution of India, articles or schedules, and try to write them in the answer. I also try to give some examples from Kerala, from Bihar, or from the Parliament, whatever. And also try to mention any judgment of the Supreme Court or High Court by remembering something, because almost every polity question will have some judgment. Uh, from the Supreme Court High Court. Similarly, if there is any committee on this issue, try to remember the name of the committee and mention it in your answer. Also, compared to the GS 1, 3 and 4, in GS 2, particularly in the polity, I would suggest you to write a little bigger introduction or conclusion because most of the questions of polity and governance are discussion based. So you can uh, write a, a slightly larger conclusion and introduction in polity answers. So coming to this question, as you're asking about anti defection law, in the introduction, you can just mention what is defection and then what is the gravity of the problem due to defection in India and then write about anti defection law, why that law is framed and what is the reason behind you know uh, the law and then, and then discuss about what is given in the question. In the question, they are saying anti defection law is not a very good thing due to some reasons. Discuss about that. And as they ask you to critically examine the statement, you can write some arguments in favor of the statements and some arguments against the statement. However, don't put side headings like arguments in favor of statement, arguments against statement. Don't put such kind of side headings. You, you keep side headings with the organic flow with the answer. Okay. Let us see how to write. First, you explain what is anti-defection law briefly. You can say that anti-defection law is inserted into the constitution of India through 52nd amendment in the year 1985 through the 10th schedule. 10th schedule of the constitution of India talks about anti-defection law. And what is the reason why it is uh, inserted in the constitution? The reason was in those days, you know, the problem of IRAM Gayaram. The IRAM Gayaram means the politicians, the, the MLAs or MPs used to change the parties frequently because of which the government in the power uh, might be destabilized because the majority political party may lose their majority when the MPs or MLAs go to another party. So it leads to instability in the government which is a major problem. And stability is very important for any government to function properly. Hence to maintain that stability, anti-defection law. That means you stop the defections by the political leaders. Anti-defection law has been introduced. You can write in one or two lines. And then what is defection? It is important. You can say that the 10th schedule clearly says two things about defection. One is if any leader, any MLA or MP, if he voluntarily, if he voluntarily gives up the membership from the political party, then he can be disqualified on the grounds of defection. So voluntarily giving up, what does it mean? Actually, Supreme Court in one of its judgments said that voluntarily giving up the membership means he no need to resign. The person, the MLA or MP, no need to resign. Even if they talk again as the political party in the public or they criticize, his, criticize the political party, it can be understood that they no longer want to stay in their political party and hence it can be considered as giving up the membership and they can be disqualified. Other thing is, if the MLA or MP, if it disobeys the whip of the political party, if it disobeys the leadership of the political party on the on voting on any issues or any policies of the government, it also can be considered as a defection and he can be disqualified. Are there any exceptions for it? 
of course for example if from one political party almost two third of the members come and join another political party in such scenarios we cannot consider that as a defection according to the 10th schedule it cannot be considered as a defection that is exception for the law and who will take decision on the disqualification it is the presiding officer in the lok sabha it is a speaker in rajya sabha it is a chairman in state assembly it is a speaker so they take the final decision about whether to disqualify a person on the grounds of defection see you may be knowing that disqualification can also be done by president for parliament and governor for state assembly for certain kind of things like if any mla or mp holds the office of profit if anybody holds the any mla mp holds the office of profit then based on the recommendation of election commission the president or governor can disqualify the legislator that is different whereas the defection on base of defection only the presiding officer can disqualify and is his decision final no in 1992 supreme court said that the decision taken by the presiding officer can be brought to judicial review so however the point is only after the presiding officer takes a decision only after he order something based on the judicial review will be there now this is a loophole this is a loophole because you might have seen in andhra pradesh from the opposition political party several mlas joined the ruling political party some of them even became ministers but speaker did not take any decision for almost like 18 months to 2 years so on that note when the opposition party approached the high court high court said that they cannot interfere in this till the presiding officer takes a decision only when the speaker takes a decision then no judiciary can do something about that that is a loophole in this one so you can give example of telangana andhra pradesh anything even in karnataka defections happened even in tamil nadu there was a case in the high court about defections in bihar for example uh, the vice president the chairman of the rajya sabha disqualified two mps from a political party who publicly criticized their political party and joined another political party so they were disqualified so you can mention one or two examples like this and then in the question they asked you how this anti defection law impedes or that means obstructs the oversight function of the legislature see what is the oversight function of legislature government shall be looked up i mean the government can be criticized by the legislature whenever the government policy is not pro poor when it is not people friendly legislature can criticize the government but now if the mps let's say central government if the mps from the majority political party if they do not like us do not like certain government policy and if they criticize that they can be disqualified they can be disqualified using this rule 2 so in that way what is happening the legislature is unable to oversee the government the fundamental idea that government shall be held responsible by the legislature that is getting impeded obstructed because of this anti defection law so you can say legislature may not be able to criticize the government because of the fear of disqualification second point is this anti defection law is again as the principle of representative democracy why because an mp is elected by such a, by a constituency people in a constituency so mp is a representative for a constituency and if the opinion of the constituency is not reflected by the mp in the parliament then definitely it is again as the principle of representative democracy so the electors of mp they will question the mp why he is not representing them in the parliament the mp may say that is afraid of disqualification you understand so in that way it is again as the principle of democracy that is the first statement impedes the oversight of the legislature the second point given in the question is anti defection law restricts the legislator from voting in line with his conscience see every mla or mp will have his individual judgment about of the government policy his independent conscience will tell him whether to accept the government policy or law or not but he will be afraid to do so he will, he, he cannot vote again as a political party because he may be disqualified using the 10th schedule in this way he may have to go again as the interest of electorates so it is again as a freedom of speech of the mla or mp so in this way 
you are supporting the statement given in the question. However, in the conclusion, you take a balanced st step. Generally, for any law, any act, my suggestion is you tell that that act is in the right spirit, but the wordings of the law may have to be changed. That means the law may have to be amended to achieve its actual goal. So you can say that though the anti-defection law has been brought into the constitution for, for the idea of political stability, it should not go against the legislator consigns. So you have to balance these two. Second thing is, the political defections are happening in India to a, to a large extent. So hence, anti-defection law is definitely required. However, it shall be amended. How it should be amended? You can give your suggestions, your opinion. You can say that only those kind of votings shall be disqualified. Which kind of votings? Only those votes, for example, voting on the annual budget, voting on the no condense motion. In those kind of votings, the legislator have to accept their political party leadership. Why? Because if you vote against in the no condense motion annual budget, it will destabilize the government. Hence, in those kind of voting, you apply this law. But general voting on the policy, you should not apply this law. This is the first amendment you have to bring in. Also, as I told you in the polity answers, you can mention the committees or, or the reports or the suggestions. For example, Dinesh Goswami Committee on Electoral Reforms said that anti-defection law shall go into the hands of president or governor, but not the speaker, because speakers belong to a particular political party. They, they, they will act, uh, you know, on the directions of the political leadership. However, president and governor are independent uh, constitutional positions. Hence, the decision of disqualification shall be taken by the president or governor based on recommendation of the election commission. On this note, you can conclude the answer. Let us go to the next question. Next question is from General Studies Paper 4, Ethics. Ethics. Friends, I want to tell you something about ethics. Whenever a question in the ethics means whenever you are writing general studies paper 4, remember that the you know you give examples for the answer as much as possible. You try to give examples so that for examiner, evaluator, it will be easy to understand your ideas. Second thing is write your own words. Don't try to by heart the definitions and don't try to vomit in the exam. Try to write in your words about what do you mean by it. Always write what do you mean by it, not what somebody else says about that. Okay. Now let us come to the question. What do you mean by moral attitude and political attitude? To what extent are these two shaped by the social media? Pause, read the question and then listen to the explanation. Okay. See, in this kind of questions, in the introduction, you first write what is an attitude. You write what is an attitude. If possible, give an example, draw a diagram and then you mention what is moral attitude and political attitude and then write about the social media. Okay. And finally, write your opinion also. In the conclusion, write your opinion or suggestions, something like that. Now, for example, first let us define attitude. What is attitude? Attitude is your opinion or your feeling towards something. It can be an object, a political party, it can be a person, it can be anything. So attitude is your opinion or feeling towards something. However, your attitude depends on the knowledge. Based on your knowledge, your attitude will be shaped. Okay. Similarly, for example, if your knowledge towards snakes is that you feel that snakes are poisonous. Based on that, your attitude towards snakes would be something of fear. You will be afraid, you will run away from the snakes, like that. Similarly, your behavior towards something will depend upon the will depend upon your attitude. In that way, you can define the attitude. For better clarity, as you might have studied in the, for the, this examination, different components of the attitude, you can mention them. For example, different components are cognitive. C means cognitive. A means affective. Affective. B is behavioral. You can say that your attitude has you know, three components. One is your cognition. That means your knowledge. For example, your knowledge towards snakes is that, your knowledge says that all snakes are poisonous. It may be wrong, but still that is your knowledge. All snakes are poisonous. Based on that affective, affective means your emotion towards that object, snakes. Your emotion would be fear. You are afraid of the snakes. Based on that, you will behave. Your behave, when a snake comes, you will run away from the snake. That is a behavior. Okay? Like that, cognitive, affective, behavioral components of the attitude 
you can show through a diagram cognitive behavioral effective or you can say belief based on that values based on that attitude whatever you can draw a diagram explain okay with an example like your example of a snake you can give example of reservation what is your knowledge of reservation based on that how you feel about reservation based on that whether you accept reservation or do not accept that like that then you come to the actual question asked they ask you what is moral attitude and what is political attitude see it's simple moral attitude means you write in your own words you don't have to buy hats and vomit you can write in your own words moral attitude means your attitudes towards the moral principles or moral values for example your attitude towards respecting elders or respecting women or no you know um, showing empathy towards the lower sections of society or poor and vulnerable whatever that is your moral attitude your attitude towards moral values principles is called moral attitude you can give example if required, you can give example for example you can say if your moral attitude says that that means if, if your attitude towards women is something like women you know should be respected right? gender equality should be there if that is your attitude towards women based on that in society you would be respecting women you would treat them equal to yourself when it comes to employment or inheritance property whatever that is a positive thing however sometimes moral attitude can lead to negative things also for example if you strongly believe that the people who molest the children shall be punished immediately it can lead to crown punishment means for example there is an example in visakhapatnam a group of people have killed a person who molested the child so in that way it can happen taking the taking law into their own hands so you write something about the moral attitude not only define not only give example but write something about that you can say that moral attitude of a person is influenced by his family the school you know the books that he read or the social media television movies or his religion also religion the religion which we follow can also affect our moral attitude then political attitude you say that political attitude is your feeling your opinion towards a political ideology a political party towards a political concept for example what is your idea towards democracy what is your idea towards reservation what is your idea towards certain political party in the nation so this this is called political attitude so if, you can give example for clarity you can say that uh, if you if your attitude towards uh, democracy is that in democracy the participation should be from grassroots level what you would do you would go and Um, generate awareness among the people educate the people to take part in the decision making to you know to send, send petitions for the government if they want any new law or policy in that way you like you like positively for example if your attitude is that democracy is only for the elite sections democracy neglects the poor people through communism through naxalism not exactly communism through naxalism only we can achieve the uh, you know development of the poor people if you think like that then you will join, go and join in the nationalism so your political attitude can be negative or it can be positive in that way you define you example discuss something write some one paragraph about political attitude then come to the uh, the second part of the question how does social media shape the moral attitude and political attitude from so here uh, try to write some three to four points about that for example social media can be facebook twitter instagram whatever social media Uh, uh for example you can say facebook has both positive and negative influence on the moral attitude negative influence means in facebook the forwards of you know the vulgar jokes or porn can actually have negative impact it can affect your moral attitude negatively positive means the the forwards in the facebook or images or videos in the facebook is about you have to save environment or you have to respect women or you have to you know uh, destroy this patriarchal system in india for example the me too movement the me too movement has become pretty popular in the social media and it has uh, uh, you know uh, created a moral value again as the patriarchism in india in india so such kind of things can happen it is a strong feminist movement through the social media for example even government can use social media for moral persuasion to persuade the people morally for example to uh, make the people think that you know female fetus is bad you have to educate the women educate the girls you know encourage the girl, girl child morally you create that feeling among the people such a part also for example the advertisements the government of india using the social media the amita bachchan vidya balan whatever they created a moral value among the citizens of india that uh, cleanliness next to godliness in that way 
moral values can be shaped by social media. Coming to the political attitude, social media can affect the political attitude of the people. For example, uh, previously when social media is not there, for a political gathering you need to campaign for long term. But now within a very short time, a quick political gathering can happen through the Facebook post or Twitter post or whatever. For example, even the Aam Aadmi Party, you can write examples like this. Generally, you should not write the names of the people, generally political people. For example, you can say Prime Minister of India, you can say Finance Minister of India or uh, something like that rather than naming Narendra Modi or something. However, uh, to some extent you can name, if, if uh, it is a positive context you can name. You can say that Aam Aadmi Party has used the social media effectively for political campaign. It, is, it was able to shape the political attitude of the people of Delhi uh, towards the Aam Aadmi Party and they were able to get electoral gains because of that. For example, domino effect can happen because of social media. For example, a small Facebook post will be reposted, a, a tweet can be retweeted, a post can be followed multiple times. Like in wildfire, the post can, in quick time, it can go to multiple people. It can shape the political attitude of people. For example, customization is one such thing. Customization means a political party want to show only particular aspects of that party. Every party may have some negative aspect, positive aspect. They will package the positive aspects of the party. They will tweet it. They will send it in the Facebook as a post. They will release the videos on the YouTube. They keep on showing the same positive things of their party to the people repeatedly. Because of that, they can get electoral gains. See, actually you can conclude in this way. You can say that political influence will lead to electoral gains. Whereas moral influence will lead the people to come to social service, to volunteer for a cause, like that. Like that, you can conclude your answer. And friends, my answers are, you know, my answers are somewhat specific as well as broader. Both are there. However, don't think that you have to write the answer only in my way. You can slightly make changes in my answers. You can add your own points. Due to time constraint, I am trying to wind up the answer only by telling the important points. I, I am not interested in discussing the issue in detail because this is not about uh, issue discussion uh, video. This is actually how to write the answer for the mains, mains examination. So friends, uh, the questions for day after tomorrow or question number 10 and 11. One question, ethics question and there is history, general studies paper 1, history question. So you write the answers for these two questions, you mail them to mains with at gmail.com. We will evaluate whenever possible and after two days you listen to your answers and if you practice answers, every alternate daily answer writing practice will actually make you extremely strong by January first week when the 2020 mains exam would be coming. Thank you friends. Bye.